The Great California Drought was well into its second year when Northeast Bakersfield resident Francis Mayer decided he couldn't in good conscience continue to dump hundreds, maybe thousands of gallons of water on his sloping front lawn each year. The 37-year-old has lived in Bakersfield for 15 years, but his concerns about excessive water use are rooted in his years growing up in Northern California. A few years ago, we had a problem with one of our sprinklers, and it just kept bubbling up and, and wasting a lot of water into the street. And I would come home from work in the afternoon, and I would see water flowing in the gutters. And it just it hit me right in the chest, because I grew up in Northern California in a part of the state that's called that we call the Six Rivers region. And um, water rights and water politics have been in my ear since, since I can remember. And folks back home would say, oh, you know, we got to, those idiots in the Southland, they, 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 they'd die of thirst if it weren't for us. And I grew up with those rivers being my playground. And uh, I've lived in Bakersfield for 15 years now, and I've, I've driven home to visit my folks and my family up there many times. And I've watched the rivers um, go down. And I've seen algae covering up old swimming holes that, that were part of my childhood, part of my heritage. And to see water flowing in gutters, it, it just, it's upsetting. Um, water should be used for drinking um, and, and watering crops so that we can eat and for hygiene. And that's about it. Anything else seems kind of wasteful. So when it came time to fix those sprinklers, I just turned them off and I wanted to see what would happen. So for a year and a half, we didn't do anything. We didn't even cut it. And we watched wild grasses grow and then die. And then um, one of the neighbors asked me what I was doing. And, and I told him I was doing this experiment. I wanted to see you know, what this should really look like because it looks nice, but it's not natural. <laughs> and um, so we cut it down. I found these boulders. Uh, I paid about $1,000 for them without realizing I was gonna have to hire a huge crane to put them into place. Ask before you buy. And uh, we put these in place, and I've left in there since. Now, I did this back in 2013, and the neighbors were definitely bummed out. But um, I don't like having things forced on me, and I just feel like there's going to come a day where we're all going to have a reckoning with water. And I guess I want to feel like I'm, I'm in control of that, and I don't want to feel guilty when I shower. It's been two years since Mayor decided to let his lawn go gold, or brown as the case may be. Now California is in its fourth year of drought, the worst dry spell on record. And while many Bakersfield residents have been slow to respond, it's obvious that gold has begun to replace green on more lawns in neighborhoods across the city. Sure, dead lawns are still the exception, not the rule. But it's no longer a shock to see yellow and brown lawns in neighborhoods where perfectly manicured carpets of verdant grass were once dominant. And these changes are borne out in local water use numbers. According to the State Water Resources Board, residential customers of California Water Service who live in Bakersfield used 37% less water in May than they did in May 2013. Customers in the East Niles Community Service District cut their overall use by 34%. Customers who get their water from the city of Bakersfield they live primarily in the city's southwest, reduced their water use by 25% last May. Significant, but still not enough to satisfy reductions mandated by the governor's office. One thing is certain, attitudes are changing and golden brown lawns, even in elite neighborhoods in Hagen Oaks or the Bakersfield Country Club are no longer taboo. In fact, they are viewed among some as responsible maybe even patriotic. It seems Mayer may have been ahead of the curve, so we asked him how his neighbors feel about his brown lawn now. <laughs> I think they get it. Like, my immediate neighbors know um, that I'm, I'm a thoughtful fellow. <laughs> and uh, one of my neighbors drove to Reno for a softball tournament, my friend Miguel, and he came back and he said, you know, man, I get it now. When I was driving to Reno, I saw so much land that looked like your yard, and I get it. And that was, that was pretty, pretty awesome. But um, I wish I would have had an alternative back when I decided to turn the water off, but I called a lot of landscape contractors and asked them about xeriscaping and if they specialized in it, and it was shocking to me that they didn't. And they were open to suggestions. So 
I hope that our local landscape professionals continue to research their escaping and, and, and I know that a lot of new construction, they've minimized the, the footprint of lawns, but um, we need to have access to aesthetically appealing plants that don't suck up water like mad. Well, you may be ahead of your time, Francis, huh? <laughs> For once, yes, maybe. Thanks a lot. You got it.